Hello friends, welcome. Friends, day before yesterday, Gopal Bittal was speaking on the earning, on Airtel's earnings. And there was one specific question which was asked about UBR. So if you look at what he says, look at the transcript here. He says that one of the challenges, particularly in the dense urban area, is there is a high degree of interference. And therefore, he thinks that the UBR is good for a rural setting where there is the density of deployment of this uh, UBR technology, which is based on Wi-Fi technology in the unlicensed band of 5 gigahertz. So if you want to deploy it, you may try to deploy it in the rural area where the density is low, but in the urban area, it will cause huge amount of interference. Now, friends, why I'm doing this video today? The reason I'm doing this video today is to explain this challenge which Mr. Bittal spoke about in the in it in his earning uh, in the company's earnings call. So, friends, what I've done is I have created a slide deck which is talking about why UBR at 5 gigahertz is failing in the urban areas. Means it will fail in the urban areas, but in the rural setting, it can be useful. Right? So we'll go point by point and talk to you about the reasons why it will be like that. So the first is that unlike in case of a macro IMT deployment, every macro BTA site is down tilted. Down tilted means the antenna has to be down tilted like that in order to prevent the propagation of the RF wave beyond a certain point. This is how you mitigate interference to your neighboring website, right? In a neighboring uh, cell site. So here you see, this is the, let's say the coverage of the macro uh, BTS. Then what you do is you actually down tilt the antenna. But here, because it has to be line of sight and you can't do without line of sight, this macro BTS has to talk to the outdoor unit on a straight line, horizontal. Now, because it is horizontal, there is a possibility that the signal can spill over and go and hit a neighboring UVR station or a neighboring CP or neighboring outdoor unit. It, it can go and travel and there is no way to contain the signal within the area that we have been talking about, within the coverage area that we are talking about. Now, this might create interference. Now, these CPs which I've, which I've showed you, these are not connected to the... UBR using this wa wireless link. This may be a Cat5 Ethernet, the configuration which uh, Reliance Geo is using. They're putting a bridge here at this point. And after that, there are Cat5 cables which goes and connect this CP. This is just to for demonstrated demonstration purpose. Actually, we are talking about this link, the macro BTS to the UBR outdoor unit, which is in a horizontal. Normally, these are all down tilted. Base stations are down tilted. That can kind of creates a beam overlap, you know, beam overlap across rooftops and increased likelihood of cross-link interference between BTS and CP of neighboring deployments or BTS and BTS of neighboring deployment. Second, no channel hopping due to TDD sync. Now, friends, this is important to understand. This is a very interesting and very important concept. What is Wi-Fi technology? So if let's say if you are deploying a Wi-Fi technology within a bandwidth of let's say 500 megahertz, you will never get 500 megahertz at a time. What you do, you break this 500 megahertz into small chunks. And those chunks are defined in the Wi-Fi standard. It can be 20 megahertz, 40 megahertz, 80 megahertz, 160 megahertz, 320 megahertz, right? Depending upon what you pick at that moment of time, depending upon what kind of interference that you see in this whole 500 megahertz of Channel. So if let's say if you see a por particular portion of the band relatively interference fee, you pick that spot and then you transmit in the spot. But in case of UBR, this kind of frequency hopping will be contained and avoided. Why? Because you need a stable link between this two unit. Let's say if this is a BTS talking to a different you know, outdoor unit located in a different building then what happens is that you need the link to be stable and therefore you won't do frequent frequency hopping. Now, it, could, it is possible that there is a link here and there is a Wi-Fi router located nearby because this is an unorganized deployment where there are no coordinated uh, deployment of CP and other devices. So this can start interfering in this link. And when you start interfering and you are not doing any kind of frequency hopping, you continue to operate in that link and that will create congestion and that will create huge interference and you'll put down the data speeds. 
So this is why, which is why this is a problem, right? So UBR operates in a point-to-point -point synchronized TDD mode. Dynamic channel switching is impractical. It will break the TSRA synchronization, result in persistent interference among neighboring UBR links and Wi-Fi router, right? Third, right? Short OFDMA symbol, ISI ray. What does it mean? And this is a technical issue. Let me explain what does it mean. Now, OFDMA is a channel structure, which you see here, used to make the RF signal more robust. If you don't use OFDMA, then the RF signal will not be so robust. There will be a lot of problems. And I don't want to get into the topic of OFDMA because it is a video in itself. But just understand that OFDMA is, let's say if you have a channel of this size, that channel has is now broken down into small, small segments. Let's say 10 megahertz of bandwidth is now broken down into smaller segments of 15 kilohertz, you know, 30 kilohertz, 120 kilohertz, like that, depending upon which band you are operating. Now, Wi-Fi also is operating in a OFDMA mode where typically the, the channel size is 70 kilohertz, 70 kilo. Unlike in case of LT, which is operating at a lower frequency, it is 15 kilohertz. Now, if the channel size is higher, which is around 70 kilohertz, then the symbol duration becomes very short. What is symbol? Every channel or subcarrier will consist of multiple symbols. Are those are multiple symbols that are carrying information. Similarly, in LTE, 15 kilohertz will contain roughly around 14 symbols. Now, I really do not know how much symbols Wi-Fi carries, but the symbols are carrying real physical information. Now, if the symbol duration is very, very low, and you have got a lot of interference due to multi-path and multi-rich, multi-path rich urban environment, then this short duration of this symbol will be more prone to inter-symbol interference. This is called ISI, right? Not the inter intelligence service agencies of Pakistan. It is ISI, inter-symbol interference. And that <clears throat> is quite you know, a possible because of the larger subcarrier, higher the subcarrier, the shorter the symbol duration. So this is the problem we are going to face in case of the uh, Wi-Fi deployment in 5 gigahertz band. That's why macro deployment in case of Wi-Fi always happens in a point-to-point -point directed antenna for outdoor. But if you want to do indoor in low power, then there are various techniques which the Wi-Fi technology uses, which is called frequency hopping, where a larger block of bandwidth is segmented into smaller size and you pick and choose a particular portion of the overall bandwidth and transmit there, which is relatively interference free. And that's why you never get to use the full bandwidth. These are interference mitigation techniques developed by IEEE technology which assumes that it will be working in an uncoordinated environment. For LTE, which is a coordinated environment, we have a different way of mitigating interference, which are quite different from Wi-Fi. So if you are going to use a Wi-Fi technology for a macro deployment, you are going to face these kind of problems. Then Wi-Fi protocol is not designed for macro use, which I already explained. Because UBR use, reuses indoor Wi-Fi physical layer Mac stack a protocol which lacks outdoor robustness. And I already have explained to you why the outdoor robustness is going to be a problem because there are no adaptive scheduling, power control or interference coordination. Very difficult to achieve this because these are very complex subjects. You can't just pick a physical layer and deploy for macro deployment, which can do best of both the worlds. And that is why it is unsuitable for dense high interference macro style development deployment, which you can clearly see here. There will be a Wi-Fi router here. This is So everything is going to keep interfering with each other in a dense and urban environment, which the protocol is not designed for. See, the another problem would be, and we will talk about that later, 5 gigahertz band is already congested. We have got Wi-Fi router, CCTV, drones, and other unlicensed deployed operating in this band. Now, if there are no central coordination, all device transmit independently, it can lead to severe co-channel co and adjacent channel interference. Like you see here, all these devices. Now, there are no coordination. And, every, and the other problem is that this is a TDD, right? Uplink and downlink has to be configured. Now, how do you know that these devices, right, have, are adopting the same uplink and downlink configuration? And then how do you know that 
how to synchronize these devices which are operating in the same band you have to synchronize in order to ensure that your uplink when you are transmitting in the uplink and the and the receiver is in the in the receiving mode the this guy which is the camera is not transmitting and choking your receiver which is trying to receive signal from the transmitter so these kind of problems you are going to face the other is high pa- power backfires so now what happens is typically this will be the problem so let's say if a technician comes to your site and tries to deploy an uvr device and he does not get a good performance what he will do he will immediately raise the power to the maximum level so when the power is raised to the maximum level which is even 30 dvm this is going to result in a beam like this a wide beam like this because you really you are not in the 53 dvm with a very pointed uh, you know antenna gain of 23 dvm right here you have got full flexibility because antenna gain is not specified so if the eirp is very high and the beam width is becomes very very high it can create a wider interference footprint from a strong side log reflection so this area where you are not getting signal because of the other uh, you know there are some other uh, devices which are operating here and you raise the power to make your signal of better quality you are self feeding yourself to create a very high interference zone in that area where other devices are also going to get impacted and your other deployment let's say if you have another site here though that site is also going to face interference from this device because you are not transmitting at optimal power you are trying to overcome interference by using a technique of raising power just power it is not optimal power so it leads to self jamming in dense urban area and emf concern also will be there no intersite scheduling now there could be possibility that you can do scheduling of inter- why intersite scheduling is required because you need to control the tx and the down you know uh, um, rx link in such a way because this is a tdd band so that you know all that the the outdoor units and the base stations are synchronous in nature let's say if the bts is transmitting the outdoor unit should be receiving if the outdoor unit is transmitting the bts should be receiving so this whole network should act as an integrated unit so there are there are technology which is available like in lt 5g these interfaces between the nodes helps in this synchronization but here the possibility of synchronization could be done through gps but gps can only help to an extent to synchronize your network right which you have deployed the uvr network but if there are other devices here those devices will work in an uncoordinated manner and that will impact you right so that is the problem one second is that as i told you in the beginning itself these are horizontal these are not down tilted so the chances that you know this devices this beams rf beam will travel across and hit another device here which is located in let's say around 20 kilometers so even if you synchronize you have to take into consideration the path of propagation path propagation time the signal remains in air and block the receiver for that duration otherwise the receiver is going to get choked so lower the higher the 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 higher the distance the beam travels more difficulty it will cross and there could be possibility of ducting also the 2.3 and 2.5 gigahertz i all told you that there are ducting where the signals can travel 400 kilometers from the atmosphere if 5 gigahertz there are ducting phenomena which happens because the because of weather phenomena then a uvr deployment at a very remote location let's say 300 kilometers might face huge interference from some uvr which have been deployed in some other location so your guard symbols which you click place has to be of a such a large magnitude will drive down the overall efficiency of the overall system significantly right then we have got weak multi path handling right because we don't have a capability to multi how do you ha- manage multi path multi path is managed by putting mimo massive mimo because all these inter uh, you know symbol interference can only be mitigated by transmitting through air another path so what we do in case of lte or in k 5g you have got multiple antennas deployed in the base station side each antenna will transmit a uncoord uncorrelated signal right in two different direction now if this signal which is transmitted in direction faces a inter symbol interference is possibility that other signal which is transmitting on a different path will not face that problem and therefore you are able to mitigate that fading but with this low cost deployment there is possibility that you can deploy you know adopt all these techniques but this will increase the cost of the system will make it as if that it is an lte system which will reduce the 
utility of a system like this to make it low cost, right? Then there are backhaul bottlenecks. So this is not a very big point, but let's read that. GPS, as I told you, does not fit uh, fix everything because there could be a possibility that other devices are not GPS synced. So those will interfere with each other. Your network may be synced, but other may not be. So the conclusion is UBR is not scalable for urban, urban broadband at all. UBR at 5 gigahertz is a quick fix, not scalable solution for dense cities phase due to lack of spectrum planning, interference mitigation, and physical layer robustness is lacking. More suitable for rural areas, low density, where LOS friendly areas are available, where line of sight is available. And that is where the challenge is. And that's why Mr. Gopal Bittal in this call was mentioning that he is facing huge interference for their UBR deployment in the urban areas. Thank you, friends, for your time. And I'll bring a series of other points in the 26 gigahertz band, the TC specification, as I mentioned earlier. Later, I already did one video yesterday. You might have seen this video. I'm going to paste the link of the video in the, in the description. And I'll follow up with, with more videos to explain the challenges in the UVR technology. Thanks for listening till the end. And I'll come back with a new video on a new topic next time. Thank you very much, friends.